Hello everyone, mabuhay! You're about to watch Research Lecture Series. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so that you will be notified with the upcoming series. You may also share the link to your students, classmates, or friends. Enjoy watching! In this video lecture, I will be presenting a lecture on the crafting of research title, statement of the problem, and hypothesis. Following the lecture, we will engage in a write shop where you will work on activity one. I hope this session will provide valuable insights and guidance for your research endeavors. The topics that will be covered in this video lecture are the following. Identifying research variables, crafting research title, research title patterns, drafting statement of the problem, writing of sub-problems, and development of hypothesis. A prerequisite of writing research title is identifying research variables. A research variable is a characteristic or attribute that can take on different values or levels and can be measured or manipulated in a study. It is an important concept in research as it allows researchers to study the relationships between variables and make conclusions based on the data collected. Typically, an inferential research has two variables which are main, independent, causal, predictor variable and subordinate, dependent, outcome, criterion variable. In an action or experimental research, the causal variable is a variable that may directly affect the outcome variable in a study. In an inferential study like test of relationship, the direction between the independent variable and dependent variable may not be established but the association is determined. For a better understanding of variables, you may watch my video lecture Lima Quantitative Research Method. This is an example of action research. The researcher has determined that there is low research productivity among faculty during the COVID-19 pandemic. As a remedy to this problem, an intervention is proposed, which is a capacity-building program using Basic Research Pattern Strategy or BRP Strategy. The faculty participants are guided by patterns in writing their manuscripts. The causal variable is Basic Research Pattern Strategy, while the outcome variable is Research Productivity of Faculty of the Institute of Education. The Causal Variable Basic Research Pattern or BRP Strategy may or may not cause change to the outcome variable. If the intervention is effective, that change is the increase of research productivity from low to high. The second task after identifying the research variables is the crafting of a research title. Crafting a research title typically involves developing a title that accurately reflects the topic or theme of the study. It must be informative and engaging in order to attract interest of potential readers. There are certain considerations in crafting a research title. For academic research, it is important to adhere to the guidelines set by the institution. On the other hand, a personal research may use the author's preference. If the research is intended for publication, it is advisable to align with the recommended format of the journal. After establishing the two variables, a research title can be crafted by combining the causal variable and the outcome variable adjoined by the conjunction. And, that is, basic research pattern strategy and research productivity of Institute of Education faculty. The title can also be lengthened by adding impact of or effects of before the causal variable and the, on the, phrase before the outcome variable of the original simply title. Hence, the new title impact of basic research pattern strategy on the research productivity of IE faculty. As a disclaimer, there are other ways of constructing a title. For instance, studies such as qualitative and other descriptive research may not have subordinate or dependent variables. As such, this pattern may not apply. As previously presented, the first title pattern is the simplest way of crafting a research title. It involves combining two variables, the causal variable, which is the basic research pattern strategy, and the outcome variable, which is the research productivity of IE faculty. 
These variables are joined by the conjunction an. One can assume that the study is experimental, as the first variable represents an intervention, and the second represents an effect or outcome. It may also be assumed that it is relational, with the assumption that, as basic research pattern strategy is continuously adopted, the higher the research productivity of the faculty will be. This somehow creates an interest in reading the content of the paper. In addition to the pattern previously provided, this second pattern can be adopted. The pattern is causal variable plus outcome variable plus subject. As an example, the causal variable is peer-assisted learning. The outcome variable is academic performance. Lastly, the subject or those involved is learners who are non-native speakers of local mother tongue. The studwise resulting title is peer-assisted learning and academic performance among non-native speakers of the local mother tongue. The pattern consists of identifying a causal variable an outcome variable, and specifying the subject or population under investigation. This structured approach serves as the basis for crafting the main problem of the study, guiding researchers in defining the elements and objectives of their research. The third pattern is well suited for qualitative studies or descriptive research without inferential questions. The pattern consists of a compelling title, plus the research type, plus topic. For instance, the compelling title, My Own Peculiar Ways, is paired with an exploratory research design focusing on the topic of distinctive behaviors of Gen Zs. This format allows for engaging titles, clear research design identification, and a concise description of the studwise focus. Other institutions may not permit the inclusion of a compelling title. It is advisable to verify the preferred format with your institution before proceeding. The fourth pattern is well suited for quantitative studies employing measures. This pattern involves combining a measure plus subject plus topic. To illustrate further, the measure is compliance the subjects or participants are library users, and the topic is warning signage with penalty. Other common measures used in research include variables such as satisfaction, effectiveness, frequency, accuracy, perception, attitudes, preferences, behavior, performance, and impact. The fifth pattern is well suited for quantitative studies also employing measures, but with the subject and topic reversed. In this pattern, the format is measure plus topic plus subject. For example, the measure is factors contributing to a certain outcome, the topic is known attainment of strategic plans, and the subject is a local university in Manila. The fifth pattern, employing a reversed format of measure, topic, and subject, adds precision to quantitative research design by prioritizing the focal measure and providing context through the topic, ultimately grounding the study within a specific subject or population. After the research title is formulated, the main problem or statement of the problem can now be drafted. This is simply done by adding an objective phrase to the title. An objective is synonymous with goals or outcomes. It is a statement of what the researcher wants to do with the topic. Objective phrases can include to determine the effects of utilizing, to investigate the relationship between, to analyze the impact of, to examine the efficacy of, to explore the correlation between, to assess the influence of, and many more. After connecting the objective phrase, Inspect the newly crafted main problem and fix any errors like prepositions or conjunctions. In this example, there is a need to replace the conjunction and with on the. The main problem has been finalized. This study aims to determine the effects of utilizing basic research pattern strategy on the research productivity of Institute of Education faculty. After the main question or main problem is formulated, 
the crafting of the research sub-questions follows. The identification of sub-problems depends on the scope or breadth of the study. The number of SO can be initially determined by the researchers, but it can be adjusted by the panelists or research faculty or research advisor during the proposal defense or topical presentation. In this particular example, three sub-questions are recommended. The first pertains to the faculty's level of productivity before the treatment, and the second pertains to their level of productivity after the treatment. Sub-question 3 addresses the difference in research productivity levels before and after the intervention. This is typically the case in action research. The first sub-problem focuses on the data before the intervention. The second problem focuses on the data after the intervention. And the third problem addresses the inference between the periods. Alternatively, the prior and after trial can be combined into the first SOP, followed by an inferential problem. The researcher may include additional problems as deemed necessary. After drafting the main and sub-problems, the hypothesis is written. This is accomplished by simply rephrasing sub-question 3 into a declarative sentence form. For example, sub-question 3, is there a significant difference in the faculty's level of research productivity before and after the intervention is rephrased as there is no significant difference in the faculty's level of research productivity before and after the intervention. The number of hypotheses depends on the number of inferential sub-problems. In cases where there is a sub-problem, such as either a relationship between variable 1 and variable 2, it is necessary to create another hypothesis, which is a restatement of the sub-problem 4 into a declarative sentence, there is no significant relationship between variables 1 and 2. The test of relationship, test of correlation, is typically included in research that investigates profile variables that may have a potential relationship with an identified variable. For example, educational attainment and the number of research conducted. Some examples of variables that can be correlated are height and weight, age and income, job satisfaction and productivity, and many others. On the other hand, there are studies that do not require hypotheses. These include qualitative investigations, such as grounded theory, ethnographic, phenomenology, case studies, historical, etc., which delve into understanding phenomena from a holistic perspective, often aiming to develop the ORES or uncover underlying patterns. Additionally, descriptive studies that do not involve inferential questions like tests of difference or tests of correlations, focus on describing characteristics or behaviors without seeking to establish causal relationships. These types of studies are valuable for providing rich, detailed insights into complex phenomena and are particularly useful in exploratory research or when the aim is to generate hypotheses for further investigation. As a hands-on application of the previous topic, you shall now accomplish Activity 1. You have to answer the following questions. 1. What are the causal and outcome variables of your research? 2. What is the title of your research? 3. What is the main question or statement of the problem? 4. What are the sub-questions or specific problems of your action research? 5. What is the hypothesis of the study? Write your answer on the right column. If your study is qualitative or descriptive, without inferential questions, such as test of difference, or test of relationship, just identify the main variable. Also, you do not need to include an inferential sub-problem like, is there a significant difference on the faculties, level of research productivity, before and after the intervention. Finally, there is no need to answer the item, what is the hypothesis of the study? Sample answers were provided in red font for easy reference. You may pause the video until you are done with this activity.
That ends our research lecture series for today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon, and share the link to your students, classmates, and friends. Thank you for watching.